You are listening to Beyond the Wheel, a podcast about the people and ideas that drive the RV community forward. Looking to get out there and stay out there? Battleborn Batteries Lithium Ion Batteries are here to power your RV, marine, and off grid adventures. Designed as an easy drop in replacement for traditional lead acid batteries, these reliable solutions have two to three times the power, charge five times faster, are a fifth of the weight, and last 10 times longer. Offered in a variety of models in unique sizes and shapes, ranging from 50 amp hour to a robust 270 amp hour. And backed by a 10-year warranty. Battleborn batteries are built to fit your needs and power your experiences. On the road, on the water, and off the grid, reliable power is here. Check them out at battlebornbatteries.com. Hi, everyone. When my wife and I were shopping to purchase our first RV, we rented one first to see how we liked the experience. That rental turned out to be very influential for our purchase, which is why I'm so excited to introduce our guest today, Malcolm Salmon from RV Easy. Malcolm is the Senior Business Development Manager for the company, and he sits down to chat with us about how this peer-to-peer RV rental company got started, how it's grown through the years, and what's new for the company. He also talks about their boots-on-the-ground marketing plan and has advice for those who are leery about putting their RV out into the world for rent. So sit back, relax, and let's get this episode started. Hi, Malcolm. Welcome to the show. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself in your role at RVEC? Yeah. Hey, Sean. Hey, Kenny. Thanks for having me. Very appreciate the time getting to come on uh, Beyond the Wheel today. I'm Malcolm Salmon. I've been working here at RVZ for about six years now. Currently lead the business development team and any new initiatives that we're looking to pursue. Previously, I had a stint in marketing. I also had a stint with customer success. Wore many hats across the company. I think as a lot of tech startups, entrepreneurs working in tech startups, you have to wear a lot of hats. So I've really done a lot throughout the the full company, which is uh, which has been a pretty cool experience for sure. I want to make yeah. sure we're saying it correctly. RVZ or RVEZ? Yeah, I get that all the time. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's a topic for for debate for sure. I think some people <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> some people say RVEZ. I I generally say RVZ, but um, it, it's really preference. But it all means the same thing. Okay, great. <laughs> I didn't even catch that, Sean. That's a good catch. <laughs> and and how would you best describe? RVZ. Yeah, so RVZ is uh, essentially we're a peer-to-peer RV marketplace. Um, you know, we connect RV owners with RV guests and really meet them in the middle, so that that RV guest who's maybe they're unsure if they want to actually go ahead and pull the trigger and buy an RV, um, mm-hmm. they just want to upgrade from tenting and and they don't want to sleep on the floor anymore. They want to try it out. Maybe it's like their kid's bucket list trip is to be in an RV and and do the Rockies or National Park. We're connecting them at a much more affordable way and an easy solution. It's literally three to four clicks and and you have an RV that you can use for a week or a weekend. And what what year did did the company start? And can you give us like a brief history? Yeah, for sure. So we started in 2016. So I've known the CEO, Will Thompson, and the CEO, Mike McNaught, uh, for about six years now, two very distinguished people, Will coming from ex-military, Mike coming uh, from the police force. And the way the company started, Mike was a police officer, eight plus years on the police force. He was injured in the line of duty, ruptured his arm in, in an arrest, uh, and was really sidelined for a few months. And he went out and bought a Class A motorhome, realized he wasn't using it that often, was looking around said hey why don't i try to make some money with this he posted it on kijiji which would be essentially craigslist on on the us side and just said rv for for rent and from there within weeks he had thousands of dollars being sent over to him from random people from you know just hey we want this let me try it and he said surely th- there's got to be something or a company that does this right uh, and did some research and on the canadian side there was nothing of the kind so that's really how rvz was was mashed together. Will and, and Mike connected, um, shared the business idea, and then went on Dragon's Den in 2017, which is equivalent to Shark's Tank on the on the US side. Took a deal with uh, with one of the dragons, Michelle Romanow. And uh, that's really where we saw kind of the growth take off is when that national kind of episode went out. Ah, that's really interesting. I didn't know there was a different version of Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The <laughs> Dragon's cool. Den. Yeah. 
So you guys are based in Ottawa, but you do have services here in here in the U.S. As far as size of the platform and RVs listed, do you, I, I'm I'm guessing then that you have more RVs available in Canada, but you also are available here in the U.S. as well. Yeah, exactly. So we launched in the U.S. Um, you know three or four years ago. We proudly can say we're the largest RV marketplace uh, on the Canadian side, uh, and looking to replicate that uh, since we've expanded to the U.S. But I would say we're, we're we hover around you know twenty five k RVs listed, um, give or take. Some you know the, the way that uh, it works. Some people sell their RVs; they're not interested. So you know it fluctuates, but not too much around the twenty five k mark. And the majority of that was on the Canadian side, but we're starting to. See see just because the US is a larger market, we're starting to see the US kind of outpace Canada. I'm not familiar too much with the uh, with the Canadian market. Is it a pretty good mix that you have on your site of like class A's, class B's, class C's, towables? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was for the longest time, it was 50-50 between motorhomes and trailers. But now we're seeing the trailers kind of edge out the motorhomes. Mm. So I'd say it's closer to 60-40. And that could just be with the current economy, right? Um, the, the price point of motorhomes are a little higher. People, it, it, there's a number of things that that could be for, yeah. Yeah, well, I know in the US, the, the travel trailers outsell the motorized the here. Mm. So that I would think that would probably... Be the same almost everywhere, and yeah, and probably like you said, price point probably plays yeah. a big part of part of that. If if somebody's renting out their RV, or if they're on the other end of that, is there some type of ver- verification process that either side needs to go through to be able to do so? Yeah, that's a great question, and a lot of trial and error on uh, the verification piece. We realized early on that um, you know that's something that needed to be done and has to be done, right? You're you're handing over essentially a hundred thousand dollar motorhome <laughs> to to yep. to uh, a guest, right? So yeah, hundred percent. Both parties go through a a pretty extensive verification process. Um, it's all done within our mobile app, and the guest will have to take a selfie. The, the host has to take a selfie. And, you know, we get the, the driver's license of both parties. So we know who they are. We identify that with the selfie. So it's all secure. And um, yeah, that, that's something that early on we realized we needed a verification process. So yeah, that's, that's in place. And then when somebody books a rental, does the payment go to you? Does it go to the owner of the RV? How does that work? Yeah. So payment, uh, we handle all the payments. Um, the guests will pay uh, for the RV through our platform, we hold on to that payment. The owner gets paid out 24 hours after his RV departs on the trip, um, and that's direct deposit. Uh, so they'll get 80% of whatever they get booked for. We keep 20%, but that covers um, insurance, uh, roadside, uh-huh. our website costs, the marketing costs. So it's a 20-80 split. The owner gets the 80%. So you know, if you rent your trailer out for $1,000 for the weekend, you're going to make 800 for that weekend. We keep 200 your RV's insured and, and we've done the marketing to bring you the guests. So um, that's kind of how the split works. So you guys provide the insurance and roadside assistance as well. Yeah, we do. So insurance was a big piece. Um, you know, probably the, the the biggest hurdle we've had to climb in the company's history was the insurance piece because, um, you know, we're relatively new. The our renting and sharing RVs in the peer-to-peer is brand new. Airbnb and Uber have done it for a while, but hmm. still the insurance companies, it's a little, it's a little murky. Um, when it comes to insurance policies. So um, happy to say we we have one of the best sharing economy policies for RVs, very similar to Ubers, but yeah, every RV rental on our platform, mandatory, the guest has to take insurance. Um, there's no RV that goes out with no insurance. And I would, I would imagine for both ends of the party, the money going to you guys, to me, feels like a more secure way to do it or a safer way to do it, that these people aren't passing money off to a stranger that maybe they never met and maybe vice vice versa. Does, is that the feedback that you guys get? Exactly. Yeah. It's just to ensure, um, you know, safety and, and reliability of, of that payment. Um, and it goes back to, to the, the COO Mike's or, origin story of RVZ is he posted this on Craigslist and literally thousands of dollars being sent to him via email. And he, he him being a police officer said, Hey, this is not safe. The, the, <laughs> like something needs to be done about this. So, um, yeah, we handle all the payments for both parties. Okay. And then as far as pricing of the rentals, do you guys, is it purely up to the owner? Do you guys have like uh, guides or anything like that to help guide an owner on what to price their RV at? 
Yep, 100%. The good thing is the owner has full control. They get to set their own pricing. So they will never go in and, and set the price for them. We will guide them based on the year make model of their RV and the geo, right? Just some some markets are hot, hotter than others, right? Some areas in the US, especially in Canada, like Banff and Calgary, a Class C motorhome is going to be much hmm. uh, rent higher than than something here in Ottawa. So based on where you're located is going to play a factor, but we'll give you guides and kind of guide you in the, in the right direction. We also have a smart pricing feature that a lot of our hosts opt into, where if you toggle this uh, feature on, it will adjust your price on the fly based on the amount of demand in your area, yeah. um, the amount of requests coming in. So it will actually adjust it for you to keep you competitive, but also maximize your earnings. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think that's good on both parties, too, because now the the person that's letting their RV out is getting the maximum dollar for the market. But the person renting can almost rent, you know, if they don't have kids or something like that. They can rent on an off season and kind of get exactly. get a savings uh, yeah. for that for that reason. Exactly. So, yeah, that's smart. I like that a lot. You uh, going back to insurance real quick, Malcolm, because I might have missed it. So does that insurance cover both sides? For the parties? Yep, covers both sides. So on the guest side, it's uh, 2 million liability, full comprehensive, full collision, fire, theft, vandalism, all included on policy, but it covers both sides. So if the guest is driving the RV or, or towing the RV and they get in a collision or hit a tree, that falls under our commercial policy. The actual RV hosts, their policy is never affected. Their premium or deductibles aren't, yeah. aren't, aren't touched. It all falls on our commercial policy. And then what about for stuff that's uh, like if they include stuff with their RV, like, um, I don't know, uh, chairs or, yeah. you know, hmm. lawn chairs, I guess. Barbecues. Or, yeah, yeah, barbecues, dishes, all that kind of stuff. Get, does that factor into the pricing and, and insurance as well? Uh, yeah. So so all that stuff is covered by the, the host security deposit. So generally you're looking at about $1,000 minimum for, for the security deposit. Some hosts go lower, some go higher based on what they're including in the RV. But a lot of that stuff can be added by the host as an add-on. So I know a host here in, in Ottawa, they have a full kayak package. So they'll 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 rent you their kayak um, holder on the back of the RV, four kayaks, mm. paddles, and that's an additional, you know, $250 per rental. So those are classified as add-ons and would be covered under the security deposit. Okay. And the oh, owner determines cool. the security deposit as well. Yeah, they do, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's pretty cool too. I, I'm I'm guessing you get a little bit of different clientele. You probably have some people that maybe are buying RVs with just the sole purpose to rent them out. And then you probably have people on there that are renting out their own personal RVs. For somebody that's renting out maybe their own personal RV that's kind of hesitant to do this, maybe they're like, oh, this is, I don't know, this is my baby. I don't, I don't know how I feel about renting it out. What would you say to them? What What's kind of like a misconception or or something that people worry about that they really shouldn't have to worry about. For sure. Yeah. And I think um, just from traveling to all the RV shows across North America, I get this a lot because people buy the RV right at the RV show. They literally just purchased it. I'm talking to them about renting it out. <laughs> and you know, the number one thing I get is no way they're going to wreck it or they're going to make it a mess or it's going to be really dirty. But you know, it doesn't happen. And I tell people this all the time. We, we've been in business six, seven years. People in the sharing economy take care of other people's stuff. One, because you're meeting the guests. They're showing up to your home or your storage site or, you know, at a location, you're doing a walkthrough orientation with them and sending them on their way. And then they're coming back and returning that to you. 99% of the time, you're bringing that RV back just as clean as you got it, if not cleaner to, to return that, you know, property to the actual RV host. So that's the biggest thing. And then the second thing I'd say is, you know, the first one always seems scary. I talk to people, the first rental seems scary. And then I get texts, emails and calls. And they said, hey, this was the best thing we've ever done. I just made my monthly payment in one weekend or my storage is covered for the year with two two rentals, right? So the first one's always the scariest, but it, trust me, it, it, it's well worth it. Nice. Does, uh, does RV, RVZ have a like a rating system or review system on owners or renters? Yeah, and that's a big, big part of of building out a marketplace, right? Is having a, a trusted brand and and you know having both parties have a say after their experience. So we've done a lot of work around the reviews. We kind of took a, a play out of Airbnb because that's that's a pretty big 
you know, step that they take is, is kind of the review process. So both parties leave a public review after the rental and you have the option to leave a private review that goes directly to either the host or the guest. And that's really just to build credibility. I think a lot of people now, especially millennials, who, who's a big part of our clientele, they grew up on Uber. They've grown up with cell phones. They've grown up with Airbnb. A lot of people nowadays, they just, the first thing they look for is reviews. I'm going to book something. I'm going to buy something on Amazon. Let me look at the reviews. So we knew that going in and, and we've done a lot of work through for our reviews. If somebody has a, like a, a bad experience or a complaint, can they come directly to the company or does that get taken up with the owner? Yeah, they can. Uh, it generally, when that happens, it goes to both parties. So if it's okay. something you know serious, or or the the two can't work it out between themselves, our VZ will step in. We have a full customer service team, and and we'll we'll be able to step in and, and manage that. Um, but a lot of the time, that the, they just kind of work it out between themselves, and and it's pretty cool to see it happen in real time. I'm I'm a uh, curious, Malcolm. You know, you being in Canada. Is there a limit to how far somebody can take the rental? If they're renting in Canada, could they do a U.S. trip from Canada? Or is there yeah. a limit on how far you can take it? No, we do. Uh, you can go anywhere in North America. Our insurance is North American wide, excluding Mexico. But we get the, the the people that, you know, they go from Toronto and head down to Florida every winter. They'll rent an oh, RV wow. for, for five, six months and go down and park in Florida and uh, and hang out and, and, and escape the cold Canadian winter. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. You, you can travel basically anywhere you want in North America. Okay. Does, I'm, I'm guessing the answer is no. Does RVZ itself have any rvs that they rent out like can somebody rent like a rvz vehicle and if so could they could they do like a one-way trip with it yeah so it's funny you ask that the way the, the my first job when i first started at rvz i came on as a fleet manager and that's essentially what i did we rvz purchased six rvs and I was the one doing all the handoffs with the guests. You know, I would flip the RVs, bring them to get maintenance, you know, wash them, send them out on the rentals. But um, that was six years ago. And we've kind of sold all of those units. It's just, we were growing so fast. We didn't have time to do the rentals anymore. We had to focus mm -hmm. on the actual product and the business. So we don't have an RVZ rental. The one ways question is very interesting. It's something that's been on our roadmap. We haven't been able to figure it out yet. It, it, a lot of demand, a lot of questions about one-way rentals. It's just nothing we've we've been able to launch as of yet. Okay. Yeah, I was curious about the one-way only because there is no limit of how far you could take it. I was just wondering if people use them and then was like, you know, well, once I get there, I don't, I don't necessarily need the RV anymore, but it's a great way to travel and to get somewhere. But I, I guess you'd always need to come back anyway. But you, you did say that you are getting a lot of questions about it. We we are. Yeah, it's just the tough part around that is, you know, because you're renting, say, here in Ottawa and, and I'm driving it down to Arizona, that RV owner needs to get his RV back in Ottawa where he lives. Right. So it's happened where, where the uh, the guests will pay for the owner to fly out. It's just a little, you know, it's mm. it's a little more uh, complicated and, and a lot of communication needed for it. So, yeah. OK. Do you have to be Canadian? or have a Canadian license to rent in Canada and vice versa? Do you have to be U.S. licensed? Nope, nope, not at all. You can have any license. I mean, 20% of our traffic is international. So a lot of Australians, a lot of people from Germany, France, Europe, they, they come over and, and they're able to drive and, and tow with, with their own uh, nationality. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool, especially seeing a lot of international travels come down. And, and yeah, there, there's no limitations there. And is, is the program mostly app based or website or like if somebody wanted to rent, what's the best way that they can find you guys to to get started, I guess? For sure. Yeah, definitely the app. Um, we've done a lot of work on the mobile app. We, we found that, you know, generally more people are in tuned and, and use the mobile app, especially when it comes to actually booking the RV and you're having back and forth communication with the RV host. If you just purchase uh, if you just booked an RV. What time can I pick it up? Where Where's the pickup location? Or if they're dropping it off, which is a huge part of our rentals is RV delivery. You want to have that constant communication right on your smartphone. But our website is just as good. It's just a lot of people tend to use the app because when you get to the rental, you have to do the check, um, the uh, verification check with your mobile app at the actual pickup location. Okay. And also with the app or, or in any way, I guess, a phone call or anything, you know, some of the RV, especially the newer ones, they're getting more advanced, we'll, we'll say, you know, they got different systems and stuff like that. If somebody was out 
with the rental, could they get in touch with the owner or somebody from from your company and say, hey, you know, I don't know how to work these jacks. I, I missed the part where the guy explained how the slides work. Do they have any type of support like once they're out in the world with, with the RV rental? Yeah, 100%. Generally, it's the, the RV owner, the RV host that, um, you know, they offer their cell phone number or they continue to communicate through the RVZ app, but they're doing a full 20, 30 minute walkthrough on every rental with their new guests, sometimes longer if you're talking about a big class A bus, right? So yeah, they have full support from the RV owner. They want to offer support because it's their unit, right? They don't want the guests doing something that they shouldn't be doing. So generally they're ready 24 um, seven. And then our team, of course, with, with, the customer service team, they're very experienced. They've probably gone through every troubleshooting process you can think of. Um, so we're always ready for a call if needed. Okay. And is, yeah. is that app both iOS and Android? That, yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Okay. And then you guys have some new stuff, right? What's, what's new with RVZ? Yeah, so that that's a great question as well. What's new with RVZ? We've just launched, we're pretty excited about this, a brand new buy and sell marketplace, basically offering a one-stop shop for any RV enthusiast. So whether you're looking to rent an RV, sell your RV, or buy an RV, you're now able to all do that under the RVZ umbrella. And we've partnered with some major dealers, especially on the US side and on the Canadian side. I think we're up to 16 or 17 RV dealer partners um, who are offering you know exclusive discounts and pricing for our RVZ customers. So it's pretty cool that, you know, now you can come in, you can rent an RV, you like it so much, we can direct you to a dealership in your area with exclusive pricing. You can now purchase an RV and then, you know, you can now list it with us and offset your payment. So that's the big piece there that really excites us is the fact that all these new people who are looking to get into an RV and want to buy an RV, they now have a way to make it affordable by listing it on our platform. Like you can walk into a dealership and the dealer says your biweekly payments are going to be 280, 280 biweekly for this trailer. No problem, because in the back of your mind, you're going to rent your RV for 150 a night. You do, you know, three or four rentals a month and your payments are covered for that month. So um, it's pretty exciting. We've seen some compelling cases of, of people pulling the trigger and doing it. One so much so that, you know, uh, one person on the East Coast, he's now has six RVs um, and he just rents them completely. So it's pretty cool. I think you'll see a lot of success from that. We just recently had um, Chris Smith from FMCA on the show and he was talking about, you know, there's about 12 million RVers and that number is looking like it could easily double because there's 12 million do the studies that they've done. There's 12 million other people interested in getting into an RV. So I, I think you guys have, wow. I, I think you guys are hitting this at the right time. <laughs> yes. That, and that's, that's funny that uh, we've actually ran some surveys too. And we've seen that, you know, a lot of people who rent have said, yes, they're considered, they're interested in purchasing. So it's uh, I think there's a big cohort. I think over the next five years, we're going to see a big, big increase in RV sales, especially if people are educated and understand that they, they don't have to fork up the payments out of their salary or their pockets. They can actually let the RV cover that for you. Yeah. And what's cool is that um, with, with, with your platform there is that people can rent, like you said, and they rent an RV, rent until they find one that they like, and then they can go ahead and it's not a whole new group that they have to deal with. They can use the same platform to explore the purchasing aspect. And then, like you said, also list it for rent. Exactly. Yeah. And that, that's, that's the feedback we got from the RV dealers, which really excites them is that kind of try before you buy aspect, mm -hmm. because what RV dealership are you able to walk into and say, Hey, I want to, I like this. Let, let me, let me take this Airstream for a weekend and, and go try it out. Right. The, the, the dealers are going to walk you out the door. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're now enabling them. They can refer their, their, or potential customers to us, they can try that exact unit or a similar unit, try it out for a weekend. Their sales guy can now jump on the phone. Hey, how was the rental? What did you like about the RV? Let me bring you in and let's talk about your floor plan or let's sign this and, and get you your own RV. So um, the dealers are really excited about that. Yeah, I think that's really smart. That's actually how uh, my wife and I found our RV. We, we went through a rental company, rented a class A first because we had narrowed it down. We did like Two ridiculous amount, two years of shopping or, or two years of like research. And then we were like, all right, I think it's a class A that we want, but we rent it one first to make sure it was the right choice. And I, I think that was like, man, that, that was just such an invaluable lesson. Like that, that was what sealed the deal for us with, with going with the class A. So yeah, you guys are definitely on to something. 
is your marketplace for new vehicles only? Will you be able to purchase uh, used vehicles through like, um, I guess, private party as well? Yeah, hundred percent. And that's, uh, you know, I'd say right now we have all the dealership inventory. We also have all of our private inventory that gets listed. So, you know, a lot of people end up selling their RV maybe after two, three years, they're either upgrading or they want to go some, a, a different direction. So yeah, we, we cater to both the new RVs from our dealers and all of the privately owned RVs that are on our marketplace. So. Okay. And is that all done with the same app? It's all, yep, all on the same app. The marketplace that we just launched is not on uh, in the app yet. That's more of a website just, we, we've just launched, but um, the app will come soon. It's going to follow fairly quickly, but um, yeah. What What is the most popular kind of RV to rent right now on your platform? Yeah, so it's a mix between, um, you know, it, it, the motorhomes you're looking at a 23 to 27 foot class C. That's basically the, you know, the family of four, the dream RV vacation. That's what they're picturing. The kids are in the class C motorhome. They have the bunk over the cab. They get to sleep up there. That's what excites them. So those generally do very well on the platform. In terms of trailers, you're looking again on the smaller side, 18 to maybe 25 feet with a bunkhouse because a lot of families are bringing the kids and having the extra sleeping room is, is, is massive. Okay. So it's families. I really thought you were going to say it was the class B van that was going to be the most, you know, there's that whole, you know, hashtag van life. I, I thought that was going to be the number one rental. Yeah, no, families, families for sure. They, they're they probably a close second or third van life. That's a huge movement. And they generally, the, the vans are always rented, especially you're talking Western Canada, uh, Colorado, um, Dallas, like the, the vans are always rented, but our primary renters are kind of families of four, maybe five. So that's, that, that's basically what we've been seeing. If, if somebody was thinking about purchasing a, a RV to rent out, what type of advice would you have for them that they knew that they were purchasing the correct RV for their area to be rented at? Like, how do they know what's going to be a popular choice for, for the area that they're in? Yeah. So I would, one, I would probably take a look at our site and see, you know, do a quick search of, of where they are and take a look at what's, what's on the platform, what's available. You can look at the reviews. This RV has 16 reviews. This one has 84 reviews and kind of get, get a sense of, of how many rentals that, that RV type has taken. But I always tell people, if you're looking to buy an RV, you know, renting is great, but one, get something that you're going to like, you're going to enjoy because you're going to be using it yourself. So you want to make sure that this purchase is right for you. The renting comes secondary. It's going to rent. Everything rents on our platform. The motorhomes, they do very well. The travel trailers are extremely well as well. The fifth wheels do very well. Shockingly, you know, a lot of people say, how do fifth wheels do so well? because not everyone has a truck big enough. They do extremely well because the RV owner is offering delivery. They're charging the guests an extra two, $300 mm-hmm. and they deliver to the campground for them. The fifth wheels get a lot of the cool events like um, staff for music festivals. They get uh, the weddings, family reunions where the hosts, all they got to do is drop off the fifth wheel, let the, the, the wedding happen for the weekend or the family event for the week. And then they go back and pick it up. So everything does very well, but I always tell people get something that you're going to like and enjoy yourself um, because everything rents. It's it, the, the market is absolutely insane right now. That's cool. I didn't think about a, a, a drop off. So that somebody say, I like Disney world. If somebody wanted to do a, like a Disney world trip, they could just have the RV dropped off does it get set up for them too? Like, do they just show up and use it yeah. and then they don't have to yep. break it down or anything like that? It, somebody comes back and picks it up. That's great. It, exactly. Yeah. So I went down, I was uh, at the, uh, the Florida super show in January and I stayed at a campground, maybe 20 minutes outside of where the, the, the show was. I'm forgetting the name on it now, but basically stayed at a campground. The RVZ owner met me there at six o'clock. My flight landed at four, met him at 6 PM. He had the RV set up, hooked up, AC on, mat was already laid out, everything, you know, it was like white glove service. So it was, uh, it's a pretty cool experience to go through. That's nice. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. What's the process for somebody that wants to list their RV for rent? What do they need to do? Yeah. So g- generally speaking, all they need to know is the year make and model and have some good images of it, right? You're, you know, a lot of the guests, the first thing they look at is, is four or five photos of the actual RV. But um, if you know the year, make and model, you're, you're basically off to the races. It'll take you anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes to get it live. It's going to ask you to verify your identity. 
once you verify your identity and it's approved, your RV is now up and, and you know available for rent. The good thing is with us is that we give the host full control so that we have a full calendar system. You know, a lot of people, they want to use their RV themselves. So you go in, you block off, say July 4th, you and your family always use the RV July 4th. You just block off those dates so you don't get requests and bombarded with, with messages for those dates when you know the RV is not available. We really give full control to the RV owner, right? We don't force you to take any rentals. You, you at the end of the day, can accept or decline as many bookings as you want. Um, and keep your calendar up to date and you'll get, um, you know, you'll get all requests for dates that you're, you're willing to rent. What about if I'm renting and let's say I have uh, this past weekend, I had my RV out and there was a maintenance issue, but somebody's scheduled to rent it this weekend, but I can't. Is it easy to kind of cancel and rebook those folks? Yeah, it is just because, I mean, we've been doing this for so long that happens. It's happened. Um, you know, so there's kind of two sides to that one, our customer success team, especially in the summer, that's, that's, you know, they're pretty good at finding a new RV and replacement because the worst thing that can happen is, you know, a guest is coming up, they have this trip planned for a full year, the kids are excited, and then there's no RV for them. So we work really hard to make sure that doesn't happen. And then the second thing is we have um, an earnings, uh, sorry, uh, payout guarantee feature for the host. So let's say, Sean, you list your RV, you take on four bookings this summer. On that first rental, if your RV is, you know, there's maintenance that's due and you can't complete the other three, we will still pay you out for those other three bookings because you turned on earnings guarantee. So with that toggled on, you do pay a higher service fee. You'll be charged more than the 20%. But in the event that your RV can't fulfill any of your, your summer bookings or any of your bookings in general, you'll still get paid out. So a lot of people who, who you know, purchase RVs solely to rent them out, they have three or four and you know, they want to make their payments. They want to you know, pay off the RV as quickly as possible. They turn this on because you know, in the event that something did happen, they are still comfortable and you know, peace of mind that they're going to get their payouts. You had said, you know, somebody planned out their trip a year in advance. How far in advance can somebody rent a vehicle through your service? Is it up to, I guess it's going to be up to the person renting, but does does the app allow up to a year in advance? Yeah, it does. A lot of people, it's funny, on the Canadian side, we see a lot of people renting kind of eight to 12 months out where they're booking their summer vacations or the, yeah, the, especially here with, you know, the, the current state of the provincial parks and all the really good spots, they get booked out a year in advance too. Right. So, you know, we see a lot of that happen where, where they're booking that eight, 12 month range in the U S we found it really interesting. A lot of people are booking a month out, maybe two months out. So it's a lot, a lot shorter of a window, but I think that that kind of says to, you know, weather probably plays a huge factor in that, right? Like in Canada, we have a short window, where it's really nice out and you can spend some time outside in across the U S I think you guys have a longer kind of warmer season than, than us. So yeah, that definitely plays a factor into it. That makes and sense. it sounds like we're a, a little less organized. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Malcolm said it nicer, Sean, yeah. with, our better, with our warmer weather. <laughs> Malcolm, I know you're here on the podcast kind of promoting it, but what other marketing tools have you guys found? to work well for you guys to get the word out. Yeah. So we've been, um, I think our biggest kind of marker was, you know, I think this comes from our CEO, Will Thompson, you know, being, having the military background, he always using military terminology in the office and, you know, boots on the ground, right? Let's be a, a boots on the ground company. Let's know our customers. Um, you know, so we love the face-to-face -face stuff and we've spent a lot of money on marketing, but I, I find a lot of value of actually going and, you know, it might not scale as quickly, but being able to go to the RV show and, and talk to, you know, two, 300 people in a weekend about RVZ and leave them, you know, either questioning if, if this is for them and, and asking us questions and kind of inspiring them to, to think about it or listing them right there on the spot, which I love is, you know, people don't believe us. And I'm said, Hey, we, I, I'll list your RV for you here. It's Friday by Sunday. If you don't have a booking request, you know, I'll, I'll send you a hundred dollars. And, you know, I've never sent a hundred dollars to anyone because <laughs> it's always worked out. But yeah, so the boots on the ground tactics, we, we love to travel and go meet people face to face. I think it, uh, it kind of sets us apart from, from our competitors. That was our strategy in Canada. We basically just did a full East to West gauntlet of RV shows. Um, the team's definitely tired after them, but uh, it was well worth it for sure. Well, I, I think that's all of our questions for you, Malcolm, unless there's something that we might have missed or that you want to add that we feel like we should have highlighted. No, I think, uh, yeah, I think that I, 
that went through all the questions you had. We talked about the buy sell marketplace. So yeah, I'm good with that. Malcolm, it was you know great having you on the show. We really appreciate your time in educating us and our our listeners. So we hope we hope you enjoyed the experience as well. And we'd love to have you back on in the future to see how everything's going. Yeah, I love it. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to have me on. And um, you know, if you're ever over in in Canada or our neck of the woods, let us know. We'd love to have you over at the office and, and show you around. We want to thank Malcolm and RVZ for coming on the show. Kenny and I both agree that for those looking to make the purchase of an RV, renting one is a great first step in both seeing if you enjoy RVing and if you like the particular model and floor plan of the RV. With RVZ, it now becomes even easier to purchase after renting, not to mention listing your new RV for rent when you are not using it. I'm not aware of any other company that has the complete cycle from renting to purchase all under one umbrella. You can check out RVZ by going to the link in our show notes. As always, thanks to Battleborn Batteries and our other sponsors for supporting the show. We only use Battleborn Batteries in our RVs and highly recommend them for everyone. The customer service alone is worth the cost of the battery, let alone the performance and longevity you get out of them. We'll be back in two weeks with another exciting episode. Until then, safe travels, everyone. Looking to get out there and stay out there? Battleborn Batteries lithium-ion batteries are here to power your RV, marine, and off-grid adventures. Designed as an easy drop-in replacement for traditional lead-acid batteries, these reliable solutions have two to three times the power, charge five times faster, are a fifth of the weight, and last 10 times longer. Offered in a variety of models in unique sizes and shapes, ranging from 50 amp hour to a robust 270 amp hour, and backed by a 10-year warranty. Battleborn batteries are built to fit your needs and power your experiences. On the road, on the water, and off the grid, reliable power is here. Check them out at battlebornbatteries.com. With the complexity of all the systems in an RV, I always say it's not if something's going to break, but a matter of when is something going to break. That is why I think an extended warranty for RVs is so important. We first interviewed wholesale warranties back in 2019 and immediately became impressed with how their policies worked, such as, you can take your RV to any licensed repair shop, including mobile repairs. They also have personalized service plans, making sure you are getting the right policy for your needs. And if you think your RV is too old for a policy, you might be surprised to hear that RVs up to 20 years old can still be approved for a policy. That is more age lenient than most RV parks I've stayed at. Go to wholesalewarranties.com forward slash beyond the wheel or click the link down below in our show notes to get your free quote today.